One of the first things I'd like to ask you is, do you feel security and productivity go hand in hand? Do you feel that security is now intrusive or you know, what are you hearing from our partners and our customers? For me, I think customers are really concerned. And the reality is we need to do it from the endpoint to the cloud. We have different operating systems. We have different form factors. They're in our pockets and the data goes everywhere and we can access it from everywhere. It's not the good old days of putting antivirus on a device and everybody was safe. It's a case of how do I build a security posture that enables me to let my cloud data follow the device, follow the user, enable their productivity. But I need to do it within budget and I need to do it to be compliant. Could you perhaps shed some light on some of the things you're hearing? It's changed a lot of security. It was basically a, a mainframe with a, with a dump terminal. You'd log in and, and everything was fine. Then we moved to PCs on desktops, but again, inside a, a corporate environment with a, a firewall protecting the outside. If you were inside, you could access the data. If you were outside, you had to have special privileges. And then things like COVID happened and everything changed overnight. Everyone had to suddenly start working from laptops. Everyone had to work from home or, or from remote offices. We went from having to secure a single point to having to secure multiple points. Some of us have corporate issued phones with security software on them. Some people don't. Some people will access their corporate networks or their applications, they may download them themselves and access them, which is not ideal. Then we go through to the laptop. It's nice to be able to work from anywhere, but there are complications in that. You could be using unsecured Wi-Fi. Once someone has that end device, that's the real key most people are looking for. They're after identities because once they have their identities, you can get into a network. Once you're in the network, you can go laterally. That's the hardest thing. Then there's another problem because you have these people that do immediately start to attack things like ransomware. But then you have people who, who will lurk in the network. There's a, an exploit that's been around for recently discovered in America where there's been some malicious software hidden inside a network for, they think, up to two years. What we're trying to do now is we're trying to find the easiest way to make the device as secure as is realistically possible without actually impacting the users. That is the key. It's about enabling all of our users to be productive. And if we create barriers to that productivity, then we all know that profitability and innovation and our ability to grow are already hampered just because of the amount of security on that endpoint. Yeah, so, so I think the bottom line, what we're trying to achieve with all of our customers is what do you have? What do you need? So there is now legislation. So we've had GDPR, for example, for a while that was introduced to protect your data. But now we're, we're looking at more advanced legislation. So we're talking about the, the NIST2, uh, Network and Information Systems, the second variant of that. There's also another one called BORA, which is Digital Operation Resiliency Act. They're looking at, are you protected? You know, let's run an assessment to make sure you are protected. Where are the gaps? If you are accessed, being able to detect you've been accessed and then having to report that you've been breached. And also, it's not just the end device. It may not be to attack the customer directly. It may be to try and find an exploit from one of their suppliers. Ian, AI is everywhere I look. It's on my phone, it's on my laptop. It comes pre-installed now. Is AI a tool to enable our productivity or is AI a risk to our security posture? That's a great question and a really, really hot topic. We've talked to people like CROs, so chief risk officers. They're really, really worried about it because they don't feel they're controlling it. What goes in comes out. If you're using something, for example, like OpenAI and you upload some sensitive data because you want it to produce a nice visual of your, your financials, what you don't realise is that data is then in OpenAI and accessible potentially to anybody. Whereas if you use your own local version of it, you build your own LLM, what goes in doesn't come out because it's, it's kept within your network and in your environment. So it's a huge thing. We've got this whole generation of people who are growing up with AI and they'll be frustrated if, if it's not implemented in their network. And so again, they'll try to find ways around it. They'll download it to their phone and they'll start using it from their phone. But right now we're at that real learning point where lots of people are, are, are just trying to figure out how can it help their business, but it has to be done securely. And absolutely, that's where obviously we are working with our customers to understand how they are posturing themselves with AI. When will they consume and how will they leverage it and to drive productivity within their organisation and for their users? <laughs> <laughs>